In today's episode, we're fishing at Western Port. We're gonna walk you through the importance of catching your own fresh bait and using that to catch some amazing fish. I'll be fishing with my good mate, Darren Adams. There's gonna be lots of laughs, lots of smiles, and lots of cracking catches. So strap yourselves in for another awesome episode of Fishing Mad. Today we are back at it, a late start. So we know we've got that prime bite window in about four hours time. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna run through with you how to go and collect your own fresh bait. We're gonna walk through all the tips, all the gear selection and the techniques to catch a fresh bait and then to turn that fresh bait into a absolutely cracking fish. So it's gonna be an awesome episode guys. So stay tuned, get comfy and let's get fishing. nothing beats fresh bait so what we're doing is planning our day around getting some bait collecting and then heading our primary target species and today our primary target species is going to be snapper it's all about getting your tides and your times right so we've hit the water today at about 3 30 p.m and we know that tide change is going to be at around 7 p.m and what we really want to do is we want to fish 90 minutes on each side of that tide so 90 minutes of the incoming and 90 minutes of the outgoing if you do all those numbers together it means we've got about 90 minutes of bait collection before we then go into our primary area and target those species. So what we are gonna be looking for is squid. That is a fantastic bait that everything likes to eat. You got things like yakas, salmon, snook. There's lots of stuff here and you can get really creative in how you target them. So we're gonna throw a few squid jigs first, see if we can get a couple of squid on the board. We might troll some hard body lures and see if we can pick up a couple of snook. And we might even throw some soft plastics in that, see if we can pick up a salmon or two. And if we can get some fresh bait, then we're gonna go into that primary bite window with a really good chance of landing a snapper. And that's what it's all about, planning your day, getting it right, and catching some awesome fish. All right, here we go. So part one of bait run is squid, because everything likes to eat a squid. So I can probably lift him, Darren. Oh, oh actually, mm -hmm. he's only on by one tentacle. So give us that net there, mate. Because now this is certainly oh, not... yeah. nice one. That's a beauty. That's just on that white squid jig there, so that's worked really well. The water's quite cloudy today, but um, certainly for this area, that is not a big squid. But when you're after bait for a bait run, that is absolutely perfect. So later on. We're hoping we can turn this squid here into a big snapper or a big gummy shark. And uh, that's what it's all about. Fresh bait equals good fishing. Now it's a full moon, very slow tides in an area where there's not much tide anyway, because it's a shallow area. So when you're not drifting very quick and you're drifting for squid, obviously if you're drifting at a, at a fairly good speed, you don't have to worry too much because you're gonna be drifting over a large area that the rain's gonna change anyway. You can position your boat where you're gonna be drifting into that area eventually you're going to get there and it's going to be happy days but today when the boat's hardly moving we've got to work harder we've got to think a bit more about it we're mid tide so about four meters deep is where we want to be rather than actually driving to an area where we're going to drift into this the, the boat's not going to get there because we're not moving so we have to go straight there and work out exactly where we want to be and we're going to have to sit it down and actually work a bit harder doesn't mean you're not going to get squid it just means you have to think more about it and that's fishing so here we are we've made it to an area where i think we want it to be it's about 3.8 3.9 meters deep we know all around here is very reefy and very weedy, and uh, hopefully we still get the results, so let's give it a go. A uh, calamari on here. Oh no, it's not a calamari. What is that? I think it's a leather jacket. Oh, it is a leather jacket. Leather, I've got a leather jacket on a squid jig. That's right? awesome. Look, got a good look at him here. Look at this, that looks... Um, look at that. Why the hell would this fish eat a squid jig? Uh, top eating fish, mate. Yeah, if it was a bit bigger, maybe. Yeah. Uh, very hard to fill it though. Yeah, I know, mate. Just calm down. We're gonna let you go. That's six, a... six spine or fan, yeah. fan tail, fan tail, like the like the lollies, mate. Fan tail leather jacket. Yeah, that's very cool. pretty looking fish. Very weird. You can just... listen to him. He's not happy. What's wrong, mate? Hey, say again. Uh huh. You want to go back in? Sure. Now. All right then.
All right, so we've got an hour before we move into that prime fishing time. So we're gonna spend just the last little bit of here, just trolling some lures at the back. So we've got some shallow diving hard body lures. So about that 60 mil profile, dive down to about a meter deep. And in these shallow areas here with a lot of reef, you will pick up some salmon and some snook. And what we're hoping is we can use those for fresh bait this time of year. Snapper absolutely love those as bait. So if we can pick up a couple of those, that's gonna be a job well done. And then once we've had that hour, we'll move into our prime area and then it's snapper time. Well, we can troll whilst so we're going between spots anyway, oh, mate. So yeah, that's all right. A minute or two between. Yeah, I reckon that, I'd, I'd go that. Actually, that's even, is it the same profile or small? Smaller. That's yeah, probably even better, to be honest. Smaller, yeah, smaller the better. Yep, let's go that one. We're now trolling two hard body lures at the back of the boat. We've got them about 50 meters of line out the back. We're trolling in a speed of around three knots. Those lures look like they're working really well. It shouldn't be too long before we pick up a few snook. Well, that's good. good. Alright, so I get some pliers. <laughs> oh, no, it's a snook. Oh, yes, even better. That's a big one. Is it? Yeah, it's a big one. I was working that back real quick, mate. We're off to a great start and already we have picked up six squid, three snook and two salmon without a great deal of effort. That means now that we can go into our primary spot and target a snapper with some fresh bait with some confidence. Go for it, you can. All right. Fresh squid. Doesn't get any better. It's just not much fun, that's all. It's slippery. But you can use every part of the squid, so you can obviously use the wings for certain fish. Absolutely. You can use the tentacles, and obviously we're going to use the hood as strips or calamari rings. And then the trick, which I just broke it. <laughs> yeah, I'll give that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Just chopped it up into rings. We won't, mm -hmm. we won't um, cut the uh, cut the cutter open because we'll spoil the rings then. So those two tentacles, they're great boats. That head is probably a big boat. You probably cut the cut that off there. It's also a good boat, that's good gut. Mm. Then your head there is look at that boat. Beautiful. Doesn't get any better than that for, mm. a, for, for a fresh good boat. Yep. And then rings. Yeah, we'll do nice thin rings. And then put a towel over the top of it, that towel there mate, if you don't mind, just keep it fresh so it doesn't go off. The, uh, the bachelor's diet. <laughs> The food of champions. Health, on a health kick. <clears throat> this is part of preparation. Uh, when you're a single man who just likes to go fishing and nothing else. No Monte Carlos, mate. No, I think you know we'll go one of these, mate, with my uh, pilchard, pilchard tasted. Go on the healthy option, mate. <laughs> yeah, got it. No. Camera? No. Camera? I reckon it is a fly. Good That's a big whiting, Darren. It's huge. It really? It's a huge whiting. Is it? On a <laughs> snelled rig, mate. Oh, look at that. Oh, that's a killer. So when you're targeting snapper and your rod absolutely buckles and you think, oh, it might be snapper time <laughs> and a big whiting. So that's a 40 plus centimeter whiting. That's perfect eating. So pretty typical size of Western Port. What's really interesting though is it took a size 5 hook. So obviously big whiting, pretty ravenous, and that took a big strip of squid on a big hook. But that is a big whiting and we're pretty damn happy about that. So look at this bloke. Hell yeah. Oh, whoa. That'll wake us up. It's gonna be. Oh. Yeah, we know what that is. You know what that is, mate. Oh, yeah. On the light rod too, Darren. On the atomics. Oh, 
Oh, that's the screen one. Yeah. Gee, it's got the big rod and the big baits. Yeah, nice red, mate. And the little one. The little strip of squeal. Oh, good. He's coming this way down, which good. is good. I think that's going to make it a bit easier, mate. Yes, for it. Ooh. This is the... Right on the slate. This is the first uh, really good fish that I've got on this new sustain. This will be three or four kilos at least. Oh. Good run. That was a great run. Fuck. Absolutely <laughs> smashed it, mate. I love the sound of it. I love the sound of it. This is what we're here for, guys. So, slack tide, everyone has just taken off. <laughs> yep. And we're like, you know what, we might just ride it out for a little bit. I'm slowly starting to... Good fish, I think. Oh. I was going to say, I'm slowly starting to win the battle. At least three, maybe more. I think this is the fish we've been after so far, Absolutely, Dan. Absolutely, mate. Absolutely. We got a few good ones last night, but... Yeah, no, this beats all of them. I don't think anything of this size, mate. This is definitely a nice red. Come on, mate. Nicely done. Tommy looks good, actually. Oh, here we go. Got a bit of colour now. Oh, yeah, it's a good fish, Darren. That, mate, Darren, this is a good fish, mate. Here we go. Nice fish. All right, let's land him, mate. <laughs> Yes, yes, there we go. Yes, happy days, mate. And yes, on the light rod, mate. Silver leaves. Nice. I'm just going to open this bale arm. Yep. You can... Alrighty, and there we go. So, this is what we're here for this start of November, and we're fishing at Western Port today. So, we're fishing at Silver Leaves, which is a pretty well known place for fish, and obviously, fish a lot bigger than this, but. You know, we've had an, a pretty epic night last night, catching lots and lots of snapper. And this morning, we've caught a couple of whiting, and then we are on the board nice and early with a beautiful snapper like that. So what are we saying, Dan? This one's two or three kilos? Yeah, about two, two and a half, I Yeah, two and a half yep. kilos, so beautiful fish. What was really cool was that was on the really light rod, so I've just got myself a new rod. I've painted the rod tips nice and white for high vis and uh, broken that little Sustain 5000, one of those new compact ones. What a beautiful fish. So I love this time of year. I absolutely love these fish. These are an iconic fish of Melbourne. This is the reason why you turn up to a spot and there'll be 100, 200 boats. And that's because everyone is after these. We'd love to catch one twice the size of this because we know there are definitely some sort of six plus kilo models out there. But um, happy days. Very, very happy with that one. There you go. Snapper fishing in Western Port. Uh, not bad at all. Um, all right, so we've just finished slack tide, and what we actually did during that time was we actually took our rods out of the water, because what happens is that boat starts spinning, and all you're gonna do is end up with line tangles everywhere, or you're gonna find that your rods are gonna snag up to the bottom. So obviously a lot of these areas that we like to fish for snapper, quite reefy areas, that's where they like to come in and feed and graze, and obviously during that slack tide, it's not a good fishing period. So we take the rods out. Now what we've done is we've completely spun around, and now we can see we've got some running water. So we've waited about 20 minutes, so now is a perfect time just to get the rods out, I've got three rods here with me, so I thought I'd just quickly run through the gear and all the selection and the rigs and that that we've gone through. So this is the first rod that I'm using. Now, I guess you have to remember at Western Port, obviously snapper is our target species, but you can catch anything around here. You get big whiting that'll take a big hook, um, and then obviously you can catch big gummy sharks, school sharks, elephant fish, all sorts of stuff. So you need a rod that's pretty much going to be able to handle all of those sort of things. Um, so this is one of the outfits I've got today. So this is probably my heavier one. So this is a 15 to 40 pound rod. So this is just a Shimano Therese, and I've got that paired with a Pen Slammer 6500, and that's got 40 pound braid on it. So this is just a dropper rig that we've created. So me and Darren, we create these ourselves. Basically all you're doing is you're doing a dropper loop there, and I've got a size 60 hook. It's got a little Lumo sleeve on the end of it, and that is the squid that we caught before that we've put into a calamari rig, which is absolutely dynamite bait. And you can see the bait presentation there is ideal because you've got four hook exposure. So if you do get a bite, that's gonna be great. The other thing about these, which is great, is you've probably got about a 60 centimeter length there from the bait, and you've got a little loop knot here, so you can chop and change sinkers really quickly. So that's number one. Okay, so the second rod, so this primarily is my Port Phillip Bay snapper rod. So this is significantly lighter than the rod that I just showed you, and this is the rod that I just caught that snapper on so, so this is a 10 to 25 pound rod so this is an atomic arrows i've got that paired with a shimano sustain 5000 this is one of the compact ones 
very, very small reel. They only weigh, I think, about 280 grams. But don't be fooled, these things can handle, I think, a 12 kilo fish. So very, very good. It's got the nice full EVA handles there. Very, very comfy rod. All right, so the rig that I've got here is probably a little bit different to what you see a lot of times. So this is just a Paternoster rig. But what I have done with these is I've down the hook sizes to size three. So I find early season, you will catch lots of snapper, gummy sharks and everything, even with those smaller hooks. So don't be fooled with those. And all I'm putting on those is just half pilchard. So all I'm doing is I'm just grabbing a full pilchard like this, cutting it in half. And on one end, what we're doing is we're putting the head. So the hardest part of the pilchard, because these are quite soft and mushy, they will fall off. So I like to just pin that through the mouth. And that is the hardest part. Always be wary of those scales on the hooks. You don't want to make sure you remove those. So you can see that's one presentation there. That's not going to fall off. And then the tail. There's multiple ways that you can pin these. I find just piercing it through the middle and it allows it to just sit on itself. But again, you've got really good hook exposure. So let's get this rod out. Okay, and this is the third rod that we've got here. So this is very similar to the first rod. So this is another Shimano Therese. This is another 15 to 40 pounds. A really good length and kilo class rod for here. I've got that paired with a Shimano Saragossa 8000. One of my favorite reels just because of that really loud drag sounds. Really, really awesome. So this is your typical Western Port rig here, guys. So this is where we've got an Easy Rig slider and I've got about two meters of shock leader, 40 pounds. And basically this Easy Rig slider can slide up and down that. The reason why we use this shock leader is braid is not very abrasion resistant. And what's gonna happen is as this easy rig slider moves up and down it can basically tear the fibers on that braid so we like to use a shock leader obviously you've got that clip there so you can chop and change uh, sinker weights very very quickly and then i've got a probably a good arm's length of fluorocarbon leader just to a single hook you could also do double snailed hooks that's not a problem and again these are a dynamite rig for snapper gummy sharks and a whole range of species around here um, and what i'm probably going to do with this is a little bit of a flesh chunk bait so never underestimate baits like salmon mackerel yakas trevally all those sort of baits you cut them up into small chunks basically pin the hook through underneath give that really good hook exposure now you've got three different setups three different baits and your job as an angler when you get out here is to have multiple options find out what the fish are biting on the day and then you might load up on that it's a good start to the day though we've already got a few on board the tides are running and i think there might be a few more on the way the evening is here and we're going to make one quick move seeking some shallower water we've got some fresh baits and hopefully we can catch a few fish on the sundown Jeez, there's lots of stuff I think. There's a tiny one, mate. is it oh that is a uh... Yeah, this actually feels two four meters of water. Oh man, the head shakes. Yeah, it is. It's, it's definitely. I think it's a red. It's fighting so hard. Oh, yeah. uh, this is going to be a nice fish. You reckon want the net? Uh, yeah, maybe, man. The head shakes. Oh, are crazy good. You just want to walk back and bring it up. Yeah, because the. And I'll do it. You let me know when we. Ready? Yeah. That's a nice fish, You're mate. Good either. That's a nice, yep. Okay. Instead of you going to behave, and you're not behaving at all. Oh, oh. All right, keep recording, keep recording. Here we go. Here we go. That's definitely a snapper. Yep. Wow. All right, so. On the fresh squid that we've caught, so. There you go. Now. We have had to work a little bit extra harder for him today because the plan was to come out and fish that evening sundown. This one isn't as big, Darren. This is just no, a pinky just, size, this one. So drag him in. But um, I think we'll let this one go, Darren. The other yeah, one's a much one's better a, fish. One's a bit better, yeah. But um, so that's caught on the fresh squid. So this one's much smaller than the one there on the floor. So this is definitely a pinky size. The one on the floor, it's just borderline snapper. I'm just gonna put that there. Okay. 
Oh, mate. He's, he's Did like... I say feisty? So that's a pinky. So he's definitely going to go in his way. See you, matey. And uh, this was the other one. And um, so good, good little run there. We did the bait run, which included some squid and some snook on the troll, which is great. Then we've got to our spot. We picked up that really nice snapper to start off with, too. We fished the evening and the sundown, and just as it's gotten dark, we've just had a nice run there. So that's another nice little snapper there. That would be a, a beautiful panty. We haven't kept many fish at all on this session, but I think he's a perfect eating one. So we might actually put him on ice and take him away with us. Um, but that's probably going to wrap up our fishing session. We might stick around for a, a tiny bit longer, but really the, the point of today's video was really just to show that, you know, going out and catching your own fresh bait can equal lots of really, really nice fish like this. Now, obviously this is a bit smaller than the other one, but that theory of going out fresh bait, catching some beautiful fish like that absolutely works. Anyway, guys, I hope that you've enjoyed this episode. I look forward to seeing you on the screen sometime soon.